is Jesus? Maybe on one level that seems like the most foolish question of all. Like we all know who Jesus is. He's a figure on that lady's crucifix. He's the image on that stained glass window. He is the name that man just yelped as he stubbed his toe. Like Jesus is, is famous. In Brazil, Uganda, South Korea, millions praise his name. Jesus is infamous. In many a nation to claim to be a Jesus follower, well, that could get you thrown in jail, or you could lose your job, or even your head. But do you actually know anything about who Jesus is? Who is the man behind the name? Well, thankfully, we, we don't have to guess. We don't have to make stuff up or muddle along. We, today, can know. You see, in the Bible, there are four accounts of Jesus' life. Three of them were written by eyewitnesses, and one was written by a historian named Luke. Now, Luke wanted to write an orderly account of everything that Jesus had said and done, and everything that happened. So he went around asking eyewitnesses all that they see, saw Jesus do. And then he gathered together all these different testimonies into his gospel, into the letter of Luke. So, so that we today can have certainty about who Jesus is, who this man really is. One of the stories Luke tells us is an encounter Jesus has with a paralysed man. Now this paralysed man, he had some really good buddies. And they'd heard a rumour about this Jesus guy who could heal the sick. And so they decide that they're going to take their paralysed buddy off to meet him. But when they get to the house where Jesus is teaching, they can't get in. The place is absolutely rammed and they can't get anywhere near Jesus. And in their desperation, they climb up onto the roof and they start to dismantle the roof and ripping it apart so that they can lower their paralysed buddy right down into the midst of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. Then what happens next is absolutely extraordinary. Because you would sort of expect Jesus to click his fingers and to heal the man. Boom! An amazing miracle. The crowd goes wild. But instead, because of this incredible act of faith Jesus has just seen in this man being lowered in front of him, he says to the paralysed man, friend, your sins are forgiven. What? Why, why would he say that? If he could heal him, well, why does he just heal him? And this statement, it creates an emotional response in the crowd, but for a slightly different reason. You see, the Bible defines sin as an act of rebellion against God. A rebellion that is so wicked that the only just punishment for it is death. And for Jesus to say that he can forgive sins, well, he's making a claim about who he is. And some in the crowd are absolutely outraged that Jesus would say that. Forgive sins, they think. Who can do that but God? Do you think you're God? And this outrage, well, it sort of makes sense, doesn't it? Because that's also sort of how forgiveness works, isn't it? If I wrong you, you would have to forgive me. It doesn't count if someone does it on your behalf. If I wrong God, well then it, I need to be forgiven by God. It doesn't really count if someone does it on his behalf. But Jesus, <laughs> he is no fool. He knows what these people are thinking. And so he challenges them. Which is easier, he says to them. To say, your son, your sins are forgiven. Or to say, get up, take your mat and walk. And then he turns to the paralysed man, the one who has been lowered right down in front of him, and he says, get up, take your mat and go home. And then this paralysed man gets up, he takes his mat and he goes home. And in doing this, Jesus, he's sort of shouting from the rooftops who he is. Jesus is not just a man. He is a man who is God. He is the God-man who has the authority to heal the paralyzed, 
but also the authority to forgive sins. Wow! This now radically changes like, our understanding of who God is. God isn't just some distant being high up in the sky, and neither is he just some powerful force moving through nature which is impersonal but holding it all together. No way! By claiming that he is God, Jesus is telling us what God is like. He is knowable. When we look at Jesus, we see the God who created everything. And this also means that Jesus can't just be consigned to the history books. Suddenly, who Jesus is, it affects everything. And what we think about him matters. We can't just place him in a category of, well, good moral teacher. We can't just think, oh, well, he was the guy my gran used to pray to. The only category which Jesus belongs to is the I am your God category. And if this is who Jesus is, the one who created everything, who sustains everything, who has the power to heal the sick and the authority to forgive sins, then what we do with this information, it matters. So who is Jesus? Who is the man behind the name? Well, the Bible tells us that he is the God of the whole universe. And now you know that, the question is, what are you going to do with that information?